and welcome again to another 6.5 virtual webcast. In this episode, we're talking about the future of telco security in a Gen AI world, and I'm joined by Nokia. Trini, it's always good to see you. Thanks for joining. Likewise, Will. It's always a pleasure to be talking to you. Awesome. Well, let's talk about Gen AI. So bad actors are leaning into it to increase the sophistication of attacks. They're leaning into agentic frameworks to scale these attacks as well. What types of threats um, are you seeing today and how are service providers dealing with them? Yeah, that's a great question uh, to start off with. Uh, we clearly see automated AI-driven attacks uh, that are rapidly probing uh, the vulnerabilities at scale for critical infrastructure. That's the first point which I would like to highlight. Uh, there are supply chain compromises that we see which are targeting the software integrations, APIs, and third-party vendors. Just as an important piece of statistics, uh, across North American uh, service providers, uh, close to 78% um, uh, of the NAM telcos have experienced close to four to six vendor breaches over the past 12 months. That is, almost everybody has actually had a problem with their supply chain. That's a very uh, important statistics for us to take cognizance of. We clearly see uh, a change in the path of advanced DDoS attacks. Uh, we are actually witnessing advanced DDoS attacks that are utilizing multi-vendor techniques and they are actually bypassing traditional defenses. The other aspect which is very, very prevalent and observed in NAM is uh, close to 60% of the NAM telcos have actually experienced seven plus DDoS attacks in the past 12 months. And this is what we highlighted in our Telco Threat Intelligence Survey that we recently published in September 2025. We also witnessed a terabit scale DDoS attacks. And for the first time, we witnessed in September 2025 a DDoS attack which is higher than five terabits. The other aspect which is very important to take note of is the uh, duration of these attacks. We can pretty much tell you that the close to 80% of these attacks are actually finishing within a time period of five minutes, and close to 50% of these attacks are finishing within a time period of three minutes. That means you got huge volume of attacks going in for a short duration, which essentially means your traditional defenses, which are manual in nature, will not be effective against these DDoS attacks. You got to adapt to automated DDoS aversion uh, approval approaches and that's something which we observe yeah and the timing of that is incredible you know we're, we're not talking hours or days we're talking minutes right and you know you talked about you know supply chain attacks critical infrastructure data protection becomes really really paramount really really important so i'm wondering how are you seeing um, csps mobile network operators strengthen their data protection and even more importantly access controls because of the, the escalating sophistication of these attacks? So the first one, um, we got to get to the basic hygiene, which is uh, patch and harden the infrastructure, apply the right patches, uh, and uh, make sure that the patches are uh, current, and also audit for any unauthorized accounts on a regular basis, adapt a zero trust approach. Then you can also look at uh, uh, different aspects, including uh, side channel attacks and firmware tra uh, tampering and all of these. That's the first thing we should really look at. Second thing is uh, really strengthen the access controls, uh, really enforce a multi-factor authentication, uh, really uh, drive password rotation, make sure that you have efficient and effective privilege access management principles, and last but not the least, to continue to apply zero trust principles in the critical infrastructure. The third aspect is uh, towards the monitoring and the detection, continuously monitor, which means that you got to deploy telco-specific EDRs, endpoint detection and response systems, telco-specific network detection and response, and telco-specific XDR solutions. It's, it's of paramount importance that you actually have these real-time monitoring solutions that are able to monitor ingress and egress traffic that's coming in and going out of the network functions, and also consistently monitoring the connections to the malicious host outside of the environment. So that's something which you got to really look at. There are also other techniques like user entity behavioral analytics. Then you can actually look at protecting your OT assets utilizing these techniques. And that's something which you got to really play, uh, 
use as well. The last part is really if there is an attack or if there is a vulnerability that's exploited, make sure that the response is actually uh, uh, addressed in a much quicker manner, utilizing automated playbooks where you can again utilize uh, the artificial intelligence capabilities in devising as well as implementing these automated playbooks. I, I love the last point you made because it's using AI for good, right? And it's sort of counterbalancing what these bad actors are doing as they lean into things like generative AI and agentic frameworks to increase the sophistication of phishing campaigns and just to automate and scale on a massive basis these attacks. And I think one of the biggest challenges is just the sheer attack surface of these mobile networks. They're massive. They have millions of subscribers, millions of devices on them. But from your perspective, what has Nokia seen with respect to some of the biggest gaps that service providers are missing in, in securing their networks and taking a lot of that great advice that you just provided? So the first one is telco networks are complex and heterogeneous for want of a better word. You got a combination of physical network functions, virtual network functions, and containerized network functions, PNFs, mm -hmm. VNFs, CNFs, as they call. These are fragmented in nature. There's a their legacy and many of the network elements are quite archaic beyond support from the vendors. So there is certainly a big challenge of fragmented visibility that exists in the networks, especially when we're talking about networks deployed across multi-cloud environment. And there is certainly an absence of or limitation around full end-to-end -end monitoring of this network. That's the first challenge that I really foresee. The second challenge is around uh, a lack of uh, proper segmentation. We've talked about principles around micro segmentation and macro segmentation, really uh, employing zero trust principles, including aspects like micro segmentation, uh, and then allowing uh, um, which, which basically stop excessive lateral movement or prevent excessive lateral movement is, a, is another challenge that uh, operators of today will have to deal with. There is actually the other aspect which is very, very important today due to the heterogeneity, the complexity, the multi-vendor nature of the networks involved. I believe the whole concept of automation is underutilized in the networks. And this is actually resulting in a lot of inconsistent policy enforcement as well as a response aspects. So that's something which is very, very important to take note of. In our study, again, in the Telecom, te telecom Threat Intelligence Survey, we believe 90% of the operators in uh, North America would like to go for SOC automation level four by 2028. For us, we believe um, zero uh, the autonomous level autonomous network level maturity is, can only be achieved by bringing in zero trust, where we call it zero touch can only happen through zero weight, zero trouble, and zero trust. So that's something which is very very important to take note of. Yeah, and you know you make a very very good point. The highly disaggregated nature. Of these networks, number one, you mentioned cloud. Um, and then when you talk about virtualization and network slicing, that with 5G standalone is, is gaining momentum, it, it creates all of these, these gaps that, that need to be addressed. So that, that was some really good advice there. But as we wind up our conversation, I'd, I'd love to talk about your recommendations. Like, so what changes should security teams make, whether it's skills or process or tools? to keep pace with um, this accelerated you know, attack vectors that are, that are coming from these bad actors? So I would actually provide my recommendations across four specific categories. The first one is people. People, uh, you got to really look at the security professionals who understand network. Having the right amalgamation of capabilities across network and security is of absolute importance. And that's one of the key recommendations that I clearly look at. Uh, the second one is around the uh, uh, process. You got to move towards a proactive process in making sure that you adapt the right processes um, and ensure that there is remediation and proactive addressing of these different threat vectors that ensue to the critical infrastructure. The third one is technology, deploying IT specific tools for uh, securing critical infrastructure in my way, in my view is almost tantamount to putting a square plug in a round hole. 
operators will have to really look at having the right telco specific tools to secure their critical infrastructure and uh, there needs to be a clear effort to from the operators to make sure that they are modernizing the security uh, uh, of the telco infrastructure in a big way there got to be proper performance indicators as well and these are the four critical recommendations i would provide to operators to make sure that they are actually securing the critical infrastructure in an efficient manner shrini i want to thank you again for a very insightful conversation i want to thank our viewers for tuning in to another 65 virtual webcast discussing the future of telco cybersecurity and the gen ai world 